we're going to finish up this lesson. Now we're going to talk about arithmetic series. So we've talked about arithmetic sequence. Now we're going to bring in arithmetic series. Uh, not a whole lot different. We're adding one more formula, but this formula is really easy. In fact, uh, I don't normally tell a lot of stories, but this is a great story. This guy named Euclid, he's a math, math guy. Uh, he was said that when he was little he, in school, like first, second grade, he was really annoying to his teacher. Okay. So uh, they had just learned adding that day and he was being annoying in the classroom. He wouldn't be quiet. And so his teacher told him to go back to his desk and add up all the numbers from one to a hundred. So one plus two plus three plus four. And the kid sat down and about 30 seconds later, he went up to the teacher and told her the answer. It was 5,050. And the teacher couldn't believe it that this little kid had added up all those numbers really quickly. And what he did was discover this arithmetic series formula. So imagine if I added all the numbers together, one plus two plus three plus four plus five, all the way to 100. We could add them out, but it's gonna be kind of annoying. Instead, what he discovered was what happens if I take the very first number in this series and the very last number in this series and add them together? What's one plus 100 gonna be? Well, there's gonna be 101. And what would happen if I took the second number in the series and the second to last number in the series and added those together? Well, that would be 101. And what would happen if I took the third number in the series and the third to last number in the series that would be 101 and so on, all the way to when you paired up 50 and 51. When you paired up 50 and 51, you'd get 101. Well, what he discovered was that if I took the first number in the series plus the last number in the series and then multiplied that by however many pairs you're going to have. Well, to find that, he said, well, I got 100 numbers and I'm going to pair them up, so I'm going to divide it by two. And so what he got here was 50 times 101, and now this kid was pretty smart, obviously, but 50 times 101 is 5,050. That is the sum of this series. And that's what we're going to do today. Here's the formula. And we're doing arithmetic series. So again, series means we're adding them all up. Here is my formula. A sub 1 is still the first term. A sub n, in this case, stands for the last term. How many ever numbers we're putting together, it's the last term in my series. So this was the one, this was the 100. N stands for the number of terms. So there were 100 terms in my series. And then S sub N stands for the sum. And so he took the first number and the last number, added them together, and multiplied by however many pairs you had, taking that number and divided by two. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to play that form, or we're going to use that formula here. Find the sum of the arithmetic series. 7 to 79 when n is 8, all right? And so you can imagine we're going 7, and then we're going to have 8 numbers all the way to 79, and the n is going to be 8. To find the sum of this series, we are finding the sum of the first 8 numbers in this pattern. We're taking n divided by 2. Well, my n is 8. I've got 8 numbers, and I'm going to divide them by 2 because I'm going to pair them up. What's the first number? 7. The last number is 79. So all I need to do is type that into my calculator and get an answer. 8 divided by 2 is obviously 4, but 7 plus 79 gets me 86, and then I'm going to multiply that by 4 because that's 8 divided by 2. The sum of this series is 344. It's easy. Just type it in. Find the sum of the first 28 terms. So we've got 28 terms of the series. If the first term is 2 and the 28th term, or in other words, the last term, is 83. All right, so we're finding the sum. Yeah, the sum of the 28 terms in the series. So my n is 28. My first number is 2. My last number is 83. So in my calculator, I am taking 14, because that's what 28 divided by 2 is, and 2 plus 83 inside of parentheses. Multiply that together. 11,000 or 1,190. That is the sum of all those numbers. The first 28 numbers in my pattern. I add them all up, I get 1190, which is great, but you're not often going to have it that way. So instead, sometimes we're going to need both formulas. We're going to need our sequence formula and our series formula and see how those work together. So let's find that out. Find the sum of the first 30 terms. If the first term is 2 and the common difference is 6. All right, first term is 2, common difference is 6. 
So let's start to set this up, all right? So we're finding the sum. So if we're finding the sum, it's that S sub 30, because I'm finding the first 30 terms. If you forgot my formula, I'm going to write it right here for you. Oh, it's right there. What am I talking about? It's right here. N divided by 2, so 30 divided by 2. A sub 1, well, I know what A sub 1 is. The first term is 2, plus A sub N. A sub N, in this case, is going to stand for the 30th term. Well, I don't know what the 30th term is. I could I could go 2 and then add 6 and get 8, and then but then I'd have to go to 30 of those. I don't got time for that. All right, so that's not what I'm going to do. Instead, I'm going to kind of delete that. Go away. Right, delete that. Uh, what I'm going to do is kind of stop here. This is great, but I need to find this mystery number. This is a mystery number. I've got to put something in that blank, and I'm going to put a sub 30 in that blank. Well, what I need to do is find what a sub 30 is, and the way I'm going to do that is use this formula just like we did in the last section. To find the 30th term in the sequence, I need a sub 1, which is 2. Plus the difference, if you notice this formula is a little bit different than the one I did before, the D being before, who cares where it's at? It's the same thing, you're multiplying. I kind of like it in front, I kind of forgot that I've done that. 2 plus 6 times N minus 1, because my difference is 6. N minus 1, so 30 minus 1. So 2 plus 6 times 29. 2 plus 6 times 29. 176. But that's not the answer. That's the 30th term. Once I figure out what the 30th term is, I'm taking this number right here and plugging it in for right there. So I'm going to put 176 in for the 30th term. So now all I got to do is do that. So I'm taking 30 divided by 2, so 15, and then 2 plus 176, close my parentheses, hit enter, 2,670. I could write it all out. I could write out the 30 terms and then add them up, and I always have students that do that, or I could use these formulas, and it's going to be a lot easier. So we started with the sum formula. We figured out, hey, I need to know the 30th term, and just like in the last section, we used our sequence formula to find us the 30th term. Let's keep going from there. Find the sum of the arithmetic series, the first 42 terms, if the first term is negative 12 and the last term is 2. Or, I'm sorry, and the common difference is 2. All right, so I'm finding the sum. So I'm using the arithmetic series formula. S sub 42. N divided by 2. So 42 divided by 2. A sub 1, which is negative 12. Plus A sub N. A sub N is, I don't know. I don't know what the 42nd term is. That's what I'm looking for. A sub N stands for the last number in the sequence. I don't know what the 42nd term is. So I'm going to stop for a second and say, all right, I got to find the 42nd term. And how do I do that? I use this formula right here. A sub 1 is negative 12, plus the difference is 2, times n minus 1, so 42 minus 1. 41 times 2 would be 82, minus 12 would be 70. Once I figured out what A sub 42 is, I'm going to take that and plug it in right there. That says 70, even though that's the saddest looking 7 I've ever seen. We're going to type into my calculator. 42 divided by 2 would be 21 times negative 12 plus 70. Take it, type it in, hit enter, 1,218. That is what you would get when you add up the first 42, first 42 numbers in this pattern. Let's keep going. Find the sum of the series 2, 5, 8 for the first 22 terms of the sequence. So it didn't tell me that it was arithmetic, but I know it's arithmetic because I'm adding 3. I'm adding 3, and so on. So again, I'm finding the sum, 22 terms. Let's plug into my formula. So 22 divided by 2. A sub 1 is 2, plus A sub N, the last number in my pattern. I don't know what the 22nd term is. If I don't know what the 22nd term is, I'm going to use my other formula. My other formula says the 22nd term is going to be equal to your first term plus my difference the difference is 3, because we added 3 each time, times n minus 1. And I'm not going to put n, because I know what n is. n is 22, because I'm finding the 22nd term. So 2 plus 3 times 21. 3 times 21 is 63, plus 2 is 65. That's what the 22nd term is. So I'm going to go ahead and plug 65 in. So I'm taking 67 times 11. 
I get 737. Last one here. Actually, I think I'm going to do one more because I think there's another one in your quick check that I want to make sure that you've seen. And I, I might have to pause real quick to pull one up. But 40, uh, the summation from 1 to 40 of this thing. Oh, So look at how you would start this thing. You would go 10. You know, this is the number I'd plug in first. So 10 times 1 minus 17. So my first number is negative 7. And then I would do the second number. I'd plug in 2. So 10 times 2 minus 17. Well, 10 times 2 would be 20, minus 17 would be 3. And then I would plug in 3. 10 times 3 would be 30, minus 17 would be 13. And 10 times 4 minus 17, uh, that'd be 40, minus 17 would be 23. And I could keep going, but hopefully as you do this, you would recognize, hey, what's going on? What kind of pattern is this? I am adding 10, adding 10, adding 10. So this is an arithmetic sequence. Okay. I'm trying to find a sum because I'm using sigma notation. So I'm going to go back to this formula. That's the formula I'm trying to do. So let's see what I can do. I want to know the sum of the first 40 terms because it's 40. 10 times I. So I'm sorry, I forgot my parentheses here. Equals n divided by 2. Well, how many terms are there? There are 40 terms. Divided by 2. A sub 1, that stands for the first term. Well, I know what the first term is. It's that guy right there. The first term is negative 7. Yeah. Plus the last term. You could use your other formula, but you don't need it. If I want to know what the 40th term is, I've got an equation right here that would tell me the 40th term. If I want to know the 40th term, all I'm going to do is plug in 40 for I, because that's going to be the last number I would plug in. And so 10 times 40 would be 400, minus 17 would tell me 383. That is my missing number. So in my calculator, eh, that's not my calculator. Let's try that one more time. 40 divided by 2, so well, let's just make that 20. Parentheses, negative 3 plus 383. Type that all in, I get an answer. I'm sorry, it's not negative 3. I screwed it up. Negative 7. Sorry, negative 7 plus 383. I hit enter. 7,520. That is the sum. If I would have done it this way, where I'd have gone all the way to the end, oh my goodness, that would have taken me forever. But instead, I used, hey, it is an arithmetic sequence formula. So once I recognized that, I knew I was trying to find the sum. So I plugged into this formula. I knew I was going to have 40 terms. I knew what my first term was because I had already plugged it in. Then all I had to do was plug in 40 to find my last term. Let's try one more thing, and again, this probably fits better in the first section, but let me show it to you. So as I was going through this, I just don't feel like I had this in here, and I know that this is part of your quick check, so let me just show it to you. Let me tell you that this is an arithmetic sequence. I'm telling you it's an arithmetic sequence, and I'm saying fill in the missing numbers. What numbers are missing in this pattern? So to do this, I got to figure out what number am I adding each time to get me from 3 all the way to 31. And so this might be kind of silly, but here's how I always think about this. To get to this number, I would have to add something. All right, let's call it, let's call it D. So I'd have to add D. And then to get from this number to this number, I would have to add D again. And to get to that number to that number, I'd have to add D again. And then I'd have to do it one more time. So how many times do I have to add the difference here? Well, I would have to add it one, two, three, four times. There are four what I call jumps. There are four jumps that I got to make to get from 3 to 31. How far did I span if I were going from 3 to 31? Well, to figure out that out, I'm going to figure out my span. My span is 31 minus 3. That's how far I've got to go. 31 minus 3 tells me that I had to span 28. I've got 28 numbers in between here, and I am dividing them by 4 because I made 4 jumps. I'm making 28, and I'm split into 4. So what is my difference? My difference is 7 because 28 divided by 4 is 7. So what that means is 3 plus 7 would get me 10, plus 7 would get me 17, plus 7 would get me 24, plus 7 gets me 31. Hope that helps you. I think you could have figured it out without it. 
but I'd like to throw it at you anyways, just that way you got it in front of you. Sorry if that's in a weird spot, but hope it helps.